my dear business friends i address you as business friends because i have been in business a number of years and i know the pleasures of being successful in business at the same time the pain in business vicissitudes are bound to come in life there is nobody in the world even the most powerful person of the world in politics most powerful person in business most powerful person in education have to face many a times in life undesirable things happen it is impossible that someone will keep on facing only desirable only desirables not possible the world is such ups and downs are bound bound to be there and if we become very highly elated whenever something very wonderful is happened in the life when we are very successful in our attempt to make money or make our position or power or status high and then we have deep depression when we find that we are not successful or something undesirable happens then life is not really happy the real happy life is that one remains equanimous in every situation smiling at every situation not a smile just to show to others look i am smiling from deep inside one keeps on smiling oh now this situation has come let me see how long it lasts there is no situation in the world or in the life of anybody which remains eternal bound to change sooner or later bound to change accepting this reality merely at the intellectual level or accepting this reality at the emotional level or devotional level because you have got great faith in the words of somebody it does not help at the actual level if you have practiced if you have experienced again and again what is happening within yourself what is happening within yourself and you train your mind to remain equanimous with everything that you experience within yourself then you are a balanced minded person and i with my experience know that the capacity to work the capacity to make decisions right decision increases when the mind is confused when there is agitation in the mind most of the time you hesitate to make a decision i am talking with my experience you hesitate whether this will be good or that will be good oh no 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 that will be much better oh no there is a risk better that confused mind cannot take a quick decision cannot take a right decision so the capacity to work capacity to get good results becomes less less and when the mind is tranquil peaceful no agitation then let any problem come the problem is there and so soon you go to the depth of the problem you know the solution from deep inside you know the solution a decision a quick decision and the habit pattern of the mind which time and again becomes very miserable that habit pattern changes very miserable i know my own case when i was involved in business it's good nothing wrong in getting involved in business nothing wrong in making money honestly without harming others nothing wrong 
as a householder, one should not go around and ask money from others. You have to work hard, earn money for your livelihood, maintain your maintenance, maintenance of those who depend on you, and so also for the good of the society. But if you don't know how to enjoy, then all the money, all the prestige, the power, the status does not give the real happiness, does not give the real happiness. I know when I used to fail in certain attempt, say I submitted a tender to the authorities or the government or the buyer, and I lost it. If I had lost it, that was not very painful to me. But when I find I lost it, because my competitor got it. Oh, horrible, my competitor, he got it. Whole night I can't sleep. So much of worry. Oh, my competitor. He is one inch taller than me. I can't bear that. I have my millions all right. But because I failed in this particular attempt, I feel so depressed, so distressed, no sleep. And I also remember in any attempt, in any deal, I was successful. Wonderful, I am successful. Whole night, no sleep, can't sleep. Whole night I keep on planning. Ah, this attempt, I got so much. Now, next attempt, next time I will do like this, and do like this, and more money, and more money. Whole night I can't sleep. What kind of life? When you're successful, you're not, not happy. When you're unsuccessful, you're not happy. Because the habit pattern has become such. You always want to be as I wanted to be. One inch taller than everybody else, at least taller than everybody else whom you know. How can this fellow be taller than me? I am the tallest person. That madness of ego. It makes no difference. You are a billionaire, not millionaire, say billionaire. And that is quite sufficient for you. You compare yourself with those who have less money, and you say, look, I have so much. My bank balance is so much. The prices of my stocks is so much. I got fleets of cars. I got my own, own aeroplane, jet plane, things like this. Yes, you feel so high. The moment you come to know that somebody who was just ordinary person, I knew him from my school days or college days, now look all of a sudden, oh, this person has become a tycoon. I can't bear. Why? Your position remains the same. Your capital remains the same. Your share market price remains the same. And yet you become so miserable. This tendency of jealousy, instead of that, if I have sympathetic joy, ah, look, a friend of mine has grown so much. Ah, wonderful. I am so happy to see him happy. I am so joyful to see him joyful. But it is easy to give such sermons. It is easy to listen to such sermons, but in actual practice, I have found very difficult, very difficult. All the time, mind remains agitated, agitated. Just to come out of that agitation, just to come out of that pain, I may divert my attention somewhere else, which I used to do. Divert my attention to this sensual pleasure or that sensual pleasure or something which can keep me happy for some time. But how long? That is gone and again, I am the same agitated person, miserable person. Very fortunately for me, very fortunately, I came in contact with this wonderful exercise, mental exercise. As your physical exercise is to keep your body healthy and strong, this mental exercise, Physical exercise like jogging or walking or 
say in yoga, yoga, asanas, pranayams, that is universal. It is scientific. It keeps your body healthy, strong. Exactly in the same way, when I got this technique, I found it is so scientific to observe the interaction of mind and matter. What is happening within me? That part is always missing. All the time, what is happening outside? What is happening outside? That becomes so predominant that what is happening within me is lost. And this technique, this procedure, this exercise wants you observe what is happening in you. You generated anger, hatred, ill will, animosity, because something undesirable has happened outside. Somebody has insulted you or uh, abused you. Or, uh, something has happened we don't like. And you generate hatred, aversion. And while you are generating hatred, aversion, your mind at the surface level keeps on rolling. Rolling in the thought, so-and-so said like this, so-and-so did like this. It so happened, such an undesirable thing. That is giving more fuel to the fire that you have started burning inside. But if you learn observing the reality within yourself, you are aware of something happening outside. Yes, we can't close our eyes and run away from that. That's the reality. Reality outside. But what reality inside? Whenever I react with any negativity, anger, hatred, ill will, animosity, lust, ego, any negativity, I will notice I am the first victim of this negativity. I harm others later on. First I harm myself. I generate anger to punish somebody. Somebody behaved like this, so I am angry. Unless I am angry, how can I listen? That's the way in which the mind goes. That is the way in which the mind was uh, uh, trained. This is the habit pattern of the mind. But what happened to me? When I generate anger or hatred or ill will, what is happening to me? And you will notice, as I noticed, a number of people who are practicing, they notice, lot of burning, heat, heat throughout the body, tension, palpitation increases, and you find I am so miserable. What am I doing? I am harming myself. I want to harm others. But instead of harming others, I am harming myself. First I harm myself, then only I harm others. I can't harm anybody without first harming myself universal law of nature, which is there. But because one does not experience these truths, one keeps on harming oneself, keeps on harming oneself, generating this defilement or that defilement, and becoming miserable, and strengthening this habit pattern of reacting, reacting with defilements, reacting with defilements, generating a lot of tensions, misery, misery. How to come out of that misery? In spite of all the money and all the position, the power, the status that I used to have and many of my friends are having, life is not that happy as it should be. After all, we earn money for, money for what? To live a happy life, real happy life. Not temporary happy life, which passes away. A real happy life, which keeps us happy in every situation, ups and downs, vicissitudes, so what? I work. If I'm not successful, I smile, not successful, so what? I try again, I try again. Always smiling, mind is always equanimous, does not lose its equanimity, does not lose its equipoise. Life becomes wonderful. You are happy in every situation. But that cannot happen just by listening to discourses, cannot happen just by reading books cannot happen even by intellectualizing it. That happens only when you experience, experience the truths within yourself. That is why sages and saints and seers of the entire world, not only of India, but outside also, everywhere, they have all said, know thyself, know thyself. What do they mean by know thyself? Yes, I know myself. I am going there. So what? Or I am a bundle of, uh, of uh, 
matter and mind, so what? At the intellectual level, I may say, a soul in me is myself, or a God in me is myself, because I have got devotion, I accept the words of my scriptures, or my guru, or my teacher, so I say, but no experience. Actually, I do not know what, unless you know yourself at the experiential level, uh, this teaching, or this advice, know thyself, does not work. Know thyself at the actual level. Something has happened outside. Now what is inside? What is happening inside? And you started knowing yourself. Oh, I am a bundle of misery. All the time I keep on generating misery for myself. All the time I keep on generating this defilement or that defilement. What I am doing? Then you start changing your habit pattern. Naturally it starts changing. You won't have to do anything. It just happens. I give example of a child. We say ignorant child. Yes, ignorant. Because this child does not know the rules of the world or nature. And he sees, he looks at some burning charcoal. He's so excited. These are red toys and I must play with them. Runs towards it and mother stops. No, this is fire. It will burn you. Don't go. And he cries, wants to go, mother stops. Again he tries, mother stops. And it so happens once, mother is not present. So he jumps, goes and catches hold of that burning fire charcoal and cries, oh, it is burnt, cries. He may make such mistake again, two, two, twice, thrice. Very soon he will realize, this is burning charcoal. It is dangerous, it burns me. We who call ourselves adults, we call ourselves very wise compared to that ignorant child. For us it takes little longer time. We keep on burning and keep on burning and then we keep on feeling also, look, I'm burning. Oh, I have generated hatred, I'm burning. I have generated animosity, I'm burning. And nobody wants to feel, have the feeling of burning. Nobody wants to feel misery, miserable. What I am doing? You have one experience. You have two experiences, three experiences. Because you are wise and because you are adult, you will take perhaps hundred experiences to come out of it. The child takes just two or three, comes out of it. But experience is necessary. You don't experience at all. You are always happy at the surface level of the mind, which keeps on rolling in the thoughts, 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 does not experience. It can't experience what is happening within you. And that is why saintly people said, know thyself. When my teacher also said, know yourself at the experiential level and gave me a technique. This is how you can know yourself at the experiential level. But what a big change. What a big change. Nobody wants to live a miserable life. And yet, out of ignorance, out of the ununderstanding of the truth, one keeps on generating nothing but misery, nothing but misery. And when that becomes clearer and clearer at the experiential level, naturally the mind starts changing its habit pattern. No, this is not good for me. No, this is not good for me. The law of nature becomes so clear. We may call it the law of the God Almighty, whatever you call it. Whenever I defile my mind, I am the first victim. Whenever I generate anger, hatred, ill will, animosity, lust, ego, anything, I become so miserable. And then I start making others miserable. I can't make anybody miserable before making myself miserable. This is the law of nature. Every time when I perform any unwholesome action, vocal or physical, I can't perform an unwholesome action which will disturb others, which will harm others. I can't do that with creating tremendous amounts of defilement in my mind. Anger, hatred, ego, some defilement or the other. And law of nature is such that as soon as I generate any defilement, I get punishment then and there. I start suffering from the hellfire. I am sowing the seed of hellfire. This seed of hellfire 
will continue. The whole life, whole life it will keep on giving me misery. Seed is such, the fruit will be such. Hellfire, hellfire. After death, nothing but hellfire. Because the seed is such, the fruit will be so. As you sow, so you will reap. And when by this technique I found that one comes out of these defilements, a pure mind, again by nature, a pure mind is always full of love, full of compassion, full of goodwill. You want to train your mind for that? As, as, as much as it becomes pure, that much it gets full of love, compassion, goodwill, only positive, positive. And then you notice again the law of nature. Whenever you find your mind is free from negativities, it is pure, full of love and compassion, nature starts reward, rewarding you. Or we can say the God Almighty starts rewarding you. We are punished the moment we break the law of the nature. We get punishment then and there, we become miserable. And we are rewarded the moment we train our mind to remain equanimous, pure, full of love, full of compassion, we start experiencing the kingdom of heaven within, the kingdom of heaven within, so much of peace, so much of harmony, so much of happiness. And the seed, now this seed, seed of happiness, purity, love, compassion, will bring nothing but the kingdom of heaven later on. This becomes so clear. By experience, not because the guru says so, the teacher says so, the scripture says so, but your own experience, you find the habit pattern is changing, the depth of the mind, where the source of impurities or the source of purities arise, you are now th with that. Every time something happens at the depth of the mind, surface of the mind, at the depth of the mind, what is happening? And then when you experience that anything wrong that happens there brings me misery here and now, and also misery for future. And anything good that arises in me gives me happiness here and now and happiness for future. Whether a rich person or a poor person makes no difference. Law of nature is law of nature. Whether a highly educated person or uneducated person makes no difference. Whether one of this status or that status makes no difference. Human being is human being. Human mind is human mind. Whenever I defile my mind, the law of nature will not come and examine, hey, is he a rich person or a poor person? He is educated or illiterate? Or whether he belongs to this community or that community? This religion or nothing doing. You have to suffer. Then and there the punishment is there. Not that I defile my mind now and punishment will come later. Simultaneously, as the defilement arises, so the misery arises. It doesn't take time. That reality, when one starts experiencing within oneself, a change automatically starts coming, a change coming. Then another change it comes in our day-to-day -day life. I've been through that, so I know. When we earn money, we have got some status. And to maintain that status, now we say, oh, I give a lot of donation, look. I give so much donation. But the donation that I give is the base of ego. I build a hospital for the society. But mind you, the hospital's name must be Goinka Hospital. Otherwise, the use, what's the use of my giving money? I don't get any name, any fame. I spend so much money. This school, this college, Goinka School, Goinka madness is there. Because you are so much attached to your ego. Otherwise, when the mind changes, the habit changes, every time charity, when you do charity, when you give donation, you feel so happy. A sympathetic joy arises. But somebody is so miserable, getting benefit of this charity. Whenever you see people getting benefit of that, you feel so joyful. No ego, no ego. It's a sympathetic joy. You find people joyful, you generate joy in your mind, naturally. And that keeps you always in good health. Good health mentally. And when there's good health mentally, 
there's good health physically also. And these ups and downs, ups and downs, bound to come. Even maybe at the physical level, a very rich person comes across some kind of disease, illness, maybe cancer. A number of cancer patients have taken this, this, this technique of meditation. I don't call it meditation. It's a scientific way of observing the truth, observing the interaction of mind and matter within yourself. It's a science, pure science, nothing else. Now these people who are very miserable because of this particular disease, and when it comes to the terminal stage, the patient is going to die soon. I have got reports, we have got uh, information for more than 10 such cases where the patient has not taken any medicine to become unconscious, have not taken any medicine to get sleep or painkiller, nothing. One observes. The whole technique is to observe. Observe the reality as it is, understanding everything that arises sooner or later passes away. Let me see. Let me see how long it dies, lasts. And these terminal cases, I get report and I feel so happy because they got this wonderful technique and they die smilingly, smilingly, without any fear, without any crying, without being unconscious. A wonderful way of dying, an art of living. Since last 31 years when this technique has been spreading around the world, I keep on getting information, of course, death is inevitable, sooner or later people die, even we personally let us die. But till now, just one or two cases where we are not sure. Otherwise, every Vipassana meditator who has died, every Vipassana meditator who has died, dies consciously, smilingly, fearlessly. What fear? One feels I'm getting promoted. Not emotion, and not fear. Because the way in which your mind is trained, that makes you happy in every situation. You don't lose the equilibrium of your mind. You don't lose the equipoise of your mind in any situation. And that is the situation where the death is coming. Yet, people say we are happy. Let death come anytime. Now there is no more fear of death. No more fear of death. I was in Daos last time and then there was a subject that you should not talk about death. Oh, no, no, you should not. Why not talk about death? Learn how to die and let anybody talk about death. You smile. Yes, let it come to now, this moment. I don't care. I'm happy. I'm ready. I'm ready to go smilingly. But that does not work if you agree only at the intellectual level, deep inside, at the actual level. If you learn how to remain equanimous in every situation, I have with my own experience and the experience of thousands of others who are passing through this technique. It's a wonderful way of life. You know the art of dying and that is possible only when you learn art of living. Art of living, one must be perfect in art of living. You get the, the technique which will teach you art of dying. Happy and peaceful now and nothing but happiness and peace for future. May all of you who have taken time to come to this meeting to listen if there is any technique. Technique not to convert you from one organized religion to another organized religion. This technique has nothing to do with conversion. Nothing to do. Of course, conversion is there, but converting you from misery to happiness. Converting you from bondage to liberation. Converting you from cruelty in the mind to all the compassion, love, big change comes. And that is what is needed to live a good life, good life for oneself, happy life for oneself and also for others. Whenever I defile my mind, I become miserable, law of nature, and I don't keep this misery limited to myself. I start generating very unhealthy vibration in the atmosphere around me, around me. 
Anybody who comes in contact with me at that time becomes miserable. When I generate anger or hatred or ill will, anybody who comes in contact with me is a miserable person. He becomes miserable. The whole atmosphere is so tense. Instead of that, if I learn how to smile in every situation, how to generate nothing but pure love, compassion, goodwill, I am a happy person, peaceful person. And I give vibration of happiness, of peace in the atmosphere around me. Anybody who comes in contact at that time feels very happy, very peaceful. So the whole technique is how to live, how to live a peaceful life, harmonious life, good for myself and good for others. I must be out of all misery within myself and I must help others to come out of misery. For that purpose this wonderful technique was discovered 2,600 years ago and it worked in those days. It is working now also and the law is applicable to one and all. One may belong to this community or that community, this country or that country, this color or that color, this religion or that religion, makes no difference at all. Human being is human being. Human mind is human mind. You have some physical exercise to keep your body healthy, strong. This is a mental exercise which will keep your mind healthy and strong. You have taken time to come here. If there are any questions, you are free to ask me. I would like that understanding it at the intellectual level may inspire you to give 10 days of your life and learn this technique for your good, for your benefit, and so also for the good and benefit of so many others. I am quite happy in my life. Why should I meditate? Good question. <laughs> yes, you are happy in your life, but don't you want to become happier than that? Don't you want to become the happiest in that? Work and you will find that you are a much happier person than what you are now. Why ten days can one learn to meditate in a shorter time? A businessman. I was also a businessman. <laughs> we always learn how to bargain. We always say, businessman is a busy man. How can I spare ten days? Oh, impossible for me. When I went to my teacher, the same argument. I'm such a busy person. Oh, my teacher, you give me the technique, I'll practice at home. I'll practice very seriously. As I practice with you, so I practice at home. Nothing doing. All right, if at all you want me to there with you, one day, good enough. I can't spare more. Two days, three days, doesn't work. Hundred years back, this technique, for to learn this technique, people have to spare one and a half months. Otherwise, this technique was not taught. Now, with the fast life, so difficult, nobody will come. Even I would not have gone to my teacher if he said one and a half month, not possible. So they decrease it to one month, some result is there. Twenty days, some result. Fifteen days, yes, some result. Ten days, yes, people get the outline of the technique. Good, something they get. Less than that, nothing. They get frustration. So somebody who spares even one day of the life must get some benefit out of it. And it requires ten days because it's a deep operation of the mind, surgical operation. You go to the depth of the mind, the source of the misery, and you can't go unless you keep on working very continuously and seriously. How does Vipassana help people with depression? Very good question, because the law of nature is such that anything that arises in the mind always arises with a sensation on the body. Law of nature. Anything that arises, good or bad, anything, it will be with a sensation on the body. And this technique will make you able enough to feel the sensations. 
throughout the body, whatever is happening, you are trained for that. And now, say, depression comes. If you don't know this technique, then the depression will become deeper and deeper. Whatever medicines you take, you are all right for some time again. Again you are under depression because the habit pattern is like such. Now this technique, oh, there is depression. At this moment, my mind is full of depression. Not depression due to this or due to that, nothing doing. Depression as depression. And then what sensation I have now? Any sensation that I have in my body at that time is related to the de this depression. And with the practice of Vipassana, again and again, you are now experienced that every sensation that arises, arises to pass away. It is not eternal. It has to pass away. So let me see. Let me see how long it lasts. It is not eternal. This depression, which is strongly related to this sensation, also not, dip, not eternal. Let me see how long it lasts. Let me see how long it lasts. It loses its strength, becomes weaker, 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 passes away. You have not suppressed it. You are just observing and it passes away. The habit pattern of generating depression goes away. You are free from it. The, for this purpose only, we who have got responsibilities, I have found that people with bigger responsibilities, like business executives or government executives, lot of tension in their life, lot of tension. And many a times they fall victim to depression. Now, large number of them are coming. The government in India, uh, Maharashtra government, is giving free, 14 days freedom to go and take a Vipassana course of 10 days going and coming, 14 days free with salary. Because they find it gives so much of help to the officers who are going there and help to the administration. They are capacity to work in crisis. And then they make good decisions without any tension with a calm mind, with a clear mind. So all the impurities, any kind of impurities, if you learn how to observe the sensation related to that, you are coming out of it. Do you still meditate? Certainly. Whatever I preach, I practice. If I don't do that, then I am just a, a, a preacher, not a practitioner. It is very essential. It's like a exercise. Everyone take some exercise or the other for the body. You, do, you may do jogging or walking or some other physical exercise or yoga to keep your body healthy. So it's a mental exercise. One has to practice every day. You learn 10 days, you go and learn how to do this exercise. Then morning and evening, you do this exercise and you re remain very fit and the life is much better. So every day I, I meditate and I request my students to meditate. How much does retreats cost? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. How much it cost? Can anybody give the cost? It is invaluable. It is priceless. If a price tag is attached to it, then understand there is no purity. We business people, we know how to make money, but don't make money with the, with the technique to, to, which helps others. Give it with love, with compassion, and people should take also in that way. No, no charges are there. Even no charges for boarding and lodging is a, uh, is a technique where you have to go and stay somewhere. Residential teaching, no charges. Once you start charging something, then always with the mind. Oh, now people are coming with so much of, why not I increase the demand, supply? More people are wanting it, so I increase the price. Madness. This is not the way you should serve people with love, with compassion. Then the question comes, how these so many centers are running? Yes, a good question. When people come and take course, there are different types of people coming to the courses, different categories. Some are so poor, especially in India we have seen, poorest of the poor, they come for 10 days they get so much benefit out of it. What one can expect from them for donation? Their 10 days coming there is a donation by itself. So poor, every day they have to work hard to earn money at least to get one meal. And
and now they have come here. But at the same time, people come from the middle class. People come who are comfortable. At the end of the course, they feel so happy, so peaceful, so joyful. Ah, this wonderful technique must spread. More and more people, miserable, poor or rich makes no difference. More and more people who are miserable, if they get this technique, they will come out of misery. They will live a better life, good life. Oh, what can I do? I better contribute for the good of others. I have already got it. Somebody donated and because of that, I got this 10 days. I donate now for the good of others. And like this, donation comes, free will, nobody questions. Nobody even knows except one or two people because those who receive money and give a receipt. Otherwise, nobody. Otherwise, again, there will be comparison. Oh, he has given so much. And how can give? I give less? I must give more. Or I cannot give this much. He has given so much. One feels depressed. Nothing doing. One can give according to one's capacity to give and according to one's volition. That's all. And like this, it is going on. Going on from last 31 years and it will continue to go. How does this meditation differ from transcendental meditation? We are not here to compare and contrast. We are not here to condemn any kind of meditation. I know TM very well. The teacher is my good friend. He started to work around the world from my house. He stayed with me. I had some friends and I, I brought him those friends and he started. I am happy. People get benefit, definitely. But then, because I have been practicing similar things in the past and then I got this technique, there's a big difference. When you take some word as an object, although afterwards you leave that word, but that word, repetition of the word, generates a vibration, a vibration, which is like a shield for you. No bad vibration will come to you. You are happy. But then it's a big barrier for you to go to the depth of your mind where all the moment there is some vibration or the other, good, bad, pleasant, unpleasant, there is something going on, you won't feel that because now you've got gen generated artificial vibration and you have to work with the natural vibration. That difference is there. Understand not to condemn many techniques because so many people are getting benefit from it. But those who want to try this, let them try and they will know the difference. What are three things I can do tomorrow to help make the conversion from misery to happiness? <laughs> you. Oh, good. Be happy. <laughs> you want three things to do? I will say one thing you do. And repeating it twice, three times, make it stronger. One thing that now I have to spare 10 days of my life. I must go and explore this technique. If it is giving benefit to so many people, why not to me? That itself is good enough. Don't start trying anything. Perhaps by trying something, you may go on the wrong path and then to bring it back on the right path will be difficult. Don't do anything. Come with a cl clean slate as you are with a determination that I will give 10 days of my life. Good enough. How do you handle difficult people? Yes, good question. Difficult people. You can't run away from difficult people. You can't change the whole world according to your desire, your wishes, your dreams. Not possible. You have to face them. Without this technique, when you face somebody who is performing certain actions which are not only harmful to you, harmful to others, they are difficult people. They won't understand that instead of generating anger, hatred, ill will towards them, as you develop in this technique, you will start generating com compassion for this person, a miserable person. Whatever he is doing or she is doing, it seems that this action, this wrong action is harming others. At the same time, this wrong action is harming this person. This person is generating some defilement on the other to harm others. And every time I know by my experience, I generate defilement, I become miserable, very miserable. 
burning. How can I throw more petrol on this person? One feels like throwing some cold water. Let him come out of misery. Let her come out of misery. That kind of love and compassion, the base changes. The motivation changes. You have to take strong action. You have to take strong action. Because you understand this person does not understand soft language. You try for soft language. It doesn't understand. So you have to use soft, hard language. Hard vocal action, hard physical action, but deep inside only compassion. Compassion. If you generate negativity in you, you have become a sick person yourself. You are an unhealthy person yourself. How can you help another unhealthy person? A lame person cannot support another lame person. A blind person cannot guide another person. You have to be healthy yourself, strong yourself, and then you find every action that you take is positive and giving good results. Could you describe how I can best assist business people that are strongly against getting to know Getting to know? Please. <laughs> Getting to know what? Themselves. Hmm? Themselves. <laughs> yes, that is the most difficult part. Most difficult thing to do, to know yourself. You know everything in the world by reading books or even by saying things and all that. You say, I know everything now. I'm the master of knowledge. But you know nothing about yourself, so you know nothing. But once you know about yourself, then it's so easy to know about others also, so easy. You are not trying to know about yourself to satisfy the curiosity. What is with me? Who am I? What am I doing? Not for that curiosity. Not to quench the thirst of your inquisitiveness. What's it? Nothing like that. It is just to understand that if there is something wrong in me, I have to change it life. So for your own good you are observing it and observing, observing you find a big change is coming naturally and you are out of your misery. For this purpose one has to know oneself. If we are to become satisfied with our current situation, does that mean we should stop trying to achieve more? Example given, stop trying to make more money. Very good question from the business people. <laughs> Certainly, I didn't stop that. After taking this course when I was 31 years old, for 14 years I continued my responsibility as a householder, my responsibility as a businessman, as an industrialist. Actually, my business and industry flourished much more after Vipassana. It didn't, doesn't make one to run away from the responsibility. A big change came, of course. What for I am earning money? What for? Now, the happiness is, I am earning, of course, for my, my own livelihood, livelihood of those depend on me. But then, whatever extra is with me, I feel like, I feel like others to share it. There are so many poor people. There are so many ways in which people are miserable. I will, if more and more people get this wonderful technique and they come out of their misery, that feeling starts. So the volition changes. You were giving charity even previously, and you give charity now. Volition changes, and that gives you inspiration. I earn more so that I can help others more. I'm helping only this much. Why not I help that much? Well, nothing wrong in that. If the, if the volition is to help others without any attachment, and you will find you are such a happy person, such a happy person. Please describe the technique and how to apply it. Well, a, a few, just an outline I can give you if you want, but how to apply it and how to understand it, it is necessary to experience it. The whole process is just to, just to experience the truth about yourself, the truth, no imagination. No speculation. So whenever you make a decision to your course, you just sit comfortably, as you're sitting now, anywhere, comfortably. Any posture that keeps you comfortable for long periods is a good posture for you.
not necessarily a lotus posture or half lotus posture. If someone can sit in that, well and good. Otherwise, any posture, closed eyes, closed mouth, and now what is it? What reality? First reality you experience is the breath coming in, going out, coming. This is the reality. Pertaining to your mind, your matter. You start observing it. Of course, difficulties will be there. The mind keeps on wandering. You bring it back. Now, awareness of the respiration, it wanders. You bring it back. Within two, three days, you will find the mind is getting settling down. And because you are working on a small area, with the truth, the mind becomes sharper and sharper, subtler and subtler, more and more sensitive. It starts experiencing some, some biochemical reaction going on here, some electromagnetic reaction going on here. That means some physical sensation is there, different kinds of sensations, which are always there throughout the body, every moment. Different kinds of sensations like heat, like perspiration, like cold, like uh, throbbing, pulsing, vibrating, tingling, heaviness. So many things are happening. Now you learn how to observe them objectively. You don't react. Just learn how to observe objectively. If some unpleasant sensation arises, you don't react blindly with aversion. If pleasant sensation arises, don't react blindly with craving. Craving, aversion, craving, aversion. You are changing this habit pattern. You are trying to make your mind more and more equanimous. And then in your day-to-day -day life, in short, this is what you have to do. By 10 days, as much as you change the habit pattern, as much as you are able to observe your sensations on the body, observe the respiration, you will find your day-to-day -day life, any ups and downs that are coming, or any impurity that arisen, maybe fear, fear for the future, always feeling insecure, what will happen to me? I have a lot of money, but if it goes away, what will happen? I have got the status, if this goes away, what will happen? This fear is there, always feeling insecure. You now start observing the sensation. Whenever fear comes, oh, there is fear. Fear of this or fear of that, doesn't matter. Fear, let me see what sensation, let me see what sensation. You are coming out of it. People have come out of it, anger. Hatred, ill will. Now, hard criminals in the jails, in the prisons, who have committed murders, so many other heinous crimes. What a change has come. Just within two or three courses, people don't believe. This person, how he's changed. Now, in the big centers in India, big jails in India, there are centers, meditation center, in the big jail of Delhi, Tihar jail. Meditation center in Nasik jail. And I'm glad that some courses have started in United States also. And it's starting in different countries. It gives results here and now. Just by this, you're observing. And you're changing your habit pattern. Change your habit pattern. If you are very happy in a good position, you'll become happier and happier and happier. If there's something wrong and you're very miserable, you're coming out of it. You're coming out of it. You don't lose anything. Every time one comes and takes a course of 10 days, one does not say, I wasted my 10 days. One does not waste 10 days. Liberation as a concept is intriguing. From what specifically are we being liberated? Liberated from your own habit pattern. When I go and teach these prisoners, I tell them, that you are not the only prisoner in the world. The, all those who are behind the bars, behind the walls, are not the only prisoners. Everyone outside this prison, everyone is a prisoner. Prisoner of one's own unwholesome habit pattern. Deep inside this unwholesome habit pattern. And one is a prisoner. One is a slave. One cannot come out of it. And keeps on suffering, suffering, suffering. So this technique helps people who are in the jail, prison, and also who are, who are in prison outside. So it, it works for everybody. So liberation is from the unwholesome habit pattern. Change it to wholesome habit pattern, you are a happier person. Equanimous sounds good, but doesn't enthusiasm and passion help a person to do amazing things? Yes. When you learn equanimity, this does not mean that you are now indifferent. I don't care whether I get money or not money, I don't care. And I don't care in my family if somebody is sick, what? 
I am a Vipassana meditator. Now I don't care. I am equanimous. No, no. Equanimity means your mind does not have any kind of habit of blind reaction. Action is always there. You are coming out of blind reaction. Whenever there is a blind reaction, either of craving or of aversion or anything, blind reaction, there is an element of negativity in it. You generate negativity, you generate misery for yourself, you make others miserable. But when the mind is equanimous, positive, and that becomes action. Action is always positive, good for you and good for others. You won't become inactive, don't worry, and you keep on progressing. Does not our dissatisfaction, our unhappiness with our lives at times uh, attribute to the success we experience? Without such unhappiness, could our success have been achieved? What you call success? Success in the material wealth, yes. But is it a real success when your misery has increased? When you don't know how to keep your mind really happy, really peaceful? No, no success. So be wealthy in the material world, perfectly all right, nothing wrong, but be wealthy inside in your mind also, all the time happy, peaceful, all the time full of love, compassion for others. You are happy to earn money, at the same time you are happy that you are making best use of the money for the good of others also, along with your own good. A comment, I think, if more people developed the self-awareness and decreased activity, that might lead to not only individual, but the society and the world. No, 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 I just was the same, same answer. You don't become inactive. I have seen with my own experience. I become so more active. It's not just by Vipassana, I become like a vegetable, let anybody come and cut me, I don't care, I am Vipassana meditator. Nothing doing. Nothing doing. People who keep on giving their experience, of course, my own experience, after taking courses, my capacity increased so much to work. But now I find thousands of people who keep on writing me, this technique has helped me to increase my capacity to work, to increase my capacity. Otherwise, why governments and business people, they send their chief executives to come to the courses because they find it gives better results, more results. Don't be afraid. You will get better results, better income, better profits, but along with that, the best profit of living a peaceful life, happy life, harmonious life. May all of you experience real peace, real harmony, real happiness within yourself and be an example for the others to live a happy life, peaceful life, harmonious life. Thank you.